been handcrafting drums from Unique Australian Timbers for about 32 years now. Um, and the Walkabout series is a very special project of Chris Brady's, um, where he goes out into the wheat belt or the gold fields or the deserts and hand selects individual trees uh, and turns them into one of the kinds and rarities and just truly extraordinary drums. Hi, I'm Chris Brady. I make drums. I've been doing it for about 30 years and it's a very uh, a special occasion for me because I've got one of my clients has come over all the way from America to uh, pick up his drum kit and I'm going to take him out in the bush and uh, show him where I got the last drum that we made for him, uh, where we cut it and we're also going to um, get some other timber which will be ready for some other drums for him in a couple of months time. So I'm taking him out in the bush to give him a look around and just see what we've got here in Western Australia and how we go about our business. Hi everybody, I'm Shannon Forrest. I'm here in uh, Perth, Australia at Chris Brady's home. Uh, just traveled halfway around the world, about 25 hours of flying. Uh, I think it's 8 a.m. here, which is 6 p.m. for me, so I'm trying to uh, get adjusted to all that. But uh, we're going out into the outback today. Uh, Chris is going out on a walkabout excursion to pick out some uh, new timbers for some new drums, which uh, uh, I'm sure you guys are gonna love to hear uh, what he's up to. And I'm excited to get out there and see how he uh, picks out the woods that makes his drum sound so unique uh, to his design. So uh, hope you guys enjoy it, and uh, uh, we'll see you soon. Off for a Brady walkabout. That's good. Shannon, well, you've, you've travelled halfway around the world, you've played on the Jarra kit, you know what it sounds like. Yep. This is, is one of them. This is the uh, Jarra forest that we're in now, and yeah. this belt goes for about oh, 200 miles, I suppose, north-south, and about 60 miles this way. So I'm standing here with a, with a Jarra tree, which is what uh, the first several snare drums that, that, that I got from uh, Chris were made out of over the years, and uh, it would be interesting for me to uh, to get his take and, and description of what makes the different timbers and the different trees here uh, uh, create the different tonalities from density to whatever. So uh, stay tuned for that. We'll get Chris's insight into that. Well, we know what this one sounds like, right. and I'm going to take you out and have a look at some of the wheat belt stuff that we're starting to build now. And I'm going to take you to the tree where we cut the wood for your drum that we're building now. Fantastic. It took us a year to get it, but we got it, so we'll go out and check that out. And we'll stop in the forest and I'll show you what else is growing here that's pertinent to the drums that you've used sure or might be using so yeah then you'd be a full bottle on it won't you absolutely fantastic man. let's go Getting into the Wandu country here, Shannon. These uh -huh. these trees that are here, these Wandus, we'll go into that a bit further, but there's a lot of drummers who's Wandu drums, especially back in the early days yeah. when we bought them out, and it's nobody made drums out of that sort of dense material. The grain structure is similar, but the density changes out here, so it changes the pitch, which is basically what we're doing. The Yorkum drum that we're building for you now out of this tree out here 
that's much more dense than any of the other tippers that you've used, so that's going to have okay. a different sound again, which is why I'm very keen that you crank it up, because there wouldn't be a York Cup drum in existence. There never has been, you know? Yeah. As far, I doubt it very much if anyone's ever made one out of most of these things, so that to me is the buzz. When yeah. you're playing on that drum, you'd be the first guy yeah. <laughs> to do that, and to me that's, that's cool. I know that a lot of the stuff we play on, it is a world first, you know? Sure. That to me, that's the essence of what we're doing, you know, is to go out here, find something, and then see a bloke like you're using it on a concert or a record, and you hear it back over the radio, and you think, I can remember that tree, it was lying by the side right. of the road in Southern Cross. Yeah. Or another bloke, I remember it came from the shearing shed of a farm out here about 80 miles away, and I knew that the shed was built in 1923, so it had been out in the sun since then, you know, and that, that to me is a real buzz, because the guy said, you built a drum for me, can you remember that? Yeah, yeah, I do remember it. I know exactly where it came from. Yeah, this is a, a York gun, boys. It blew over here about uh, in April when that big storm come through. So we, I thought I'd swoop onto this one. And it's a shame I couldn't recover the the burl out of the base of this. Is, the wood in there is phenomenal. You cut a little bit out of here to have a look. But you can see the, the hollow in here, which is the bane of most of the trees out here because, as I said yeah. before, they need it for habitat. So when you're getting wood for drums, you obviously just got to cut around that, but it would be no good for trying to veneer that or something. Yeah. Cut that way, but I don't think anyone's made a York gum drum or anything much out of it, so you know I've been the first. All right. And I wanted to show you the tree because it's where it came from, and yeah. it, to play on something when you've been out here it kind of means a little bit more, you know? Sure. Okay, I got this chainsaw here, your old trusty machine. There's a bush down over there, a needle bush, which is a hakia, and uh, I think there's enough wood in it just for one drum and I'd like to try and make one of those because that's one less that we need to find out about. So you can whip over there now and it's only a very small bush and see if I can get out of it and hopefully we'll get a drum, eh? two fingers. How am I getting stronger? You are. <laughs> well we've got this beautiful piece of York gum here and um, we're really super looking forward to seeing the drum that this produces. Um, this bit is so beautifully highly figured and it's so hard and just the end grain on it is just absolutely spectacular. Um, we can't wait to hear it, it's just um, this is what making drums is all about. It's about passion, it's about finding the right parts, it's about not compromising anything for sound. Um, including how many we can make. Um, it's, um, it's what you do to, you know, we don't follow trends, we invent them. We've never ever made a drum ever out of this and we can't wait to hear what the results are going to be. So we're wrapping up the uh, walkabout. Hope you guys enjoyed uh, getting to take a look into what Chris Brady's all about as much as I did. Uh, very insightful and inspiring to see the way he goes about, uh, you know, creating the sounds that he does. So. Uh, I uh, look forward to hearing the drums that come from this, and uh, I'm sure you guys will be anxious to hear them too, and we'll see you soon.